Okay, in this video, I'm going to cover the Q data structure in C++. So Q is a first in, first out sort of data structure, and it's good for a uh, breadth first search. So let's take a look at program, include IO stream. So like our stack video, we're going to have a const called max size, and we're going to initialize to 50. It's just an arbitrary small number. We choose choose whatever you want and we're going to call our class a queue and inside we're going to have public and private and we're going to create our constructor here and we're going to construct it by having two variables m last and then m first so we're going to use an array like before but here is a little bit tricky because um, we can't, it's, it's hard, you don't want to sort it by moving your items in the array. So what we're going to do is have essentially like two pointers or just two index that keeps track of where we are and then move along the array. So it's kind of like a circular type of array. And that way we can, uh, don't have to worry about moving. When the first item disappears, we don't have to worry about moving the rest of the items to the front. Okay, so we're gonna create uh, m last and m first, so that's what that is. And we're gonna put this here too. So we now we have our two numbers that keep track of our index, and then we have our actual queue, which is an array, and we're gonna pass in max size. Okay, so that gives us our array to hold all the values, and then we initialize it by setting those uh, index indices to zero and then to actually add items to your queue we have a function called in queue and I know this word is very ugly so we're gonna have we're gonna pass in integer values to our queue okay so to add an item uh, what you want to do is do m Q and then pass in M last and set that equal to the value. Okay, and then we want to do some checks. So if M last is greater than or equal to max size, what we want to do is reset M last. Otherwise, what we want to do is increment it. So basically what this says is, you know, keep adding items to your array, and then if it hits the end, you want to loop around. Okay, so here we're kind of making some assumptions that um, we're going to always have something shorter than 50. If it loops over, it's going to error out. Uh, right now, we're not going to handle that. So we'll go ahead and move on. So that's our in queue, which adds items. Let's create a print function that will print out the items so we can see what's happening. So we'll have a void print. And inside our void print, we're going to do a quick check to see if it's empty. And let's go ahead and make a quick empty function. So we'll call this bool is empty. And uh, it's a simple check. You just say if m last is m first. So basically, if the indices are pointing at the same uh, index, then it means that there's nothing there. So that's how we'll check. Return true if so, and then otherwise return false to show that it's empty. So now we could use that is empty function inside our call here. So we could just say is if is empty, do something. And what we're going to do is say std c out empty q and just exit out of the print function. Otherwise, what we want to do is set our current counter i to first and then do a while loop. So while i is not equal to m 
last. Okay, so while it's not the last index, we want to print out everything in there. So we have our MQ with our I index, and we're going to print it out on a new line. And then we want to increment the I value. So because of the circular thing that happens, we want to actually check the remainder based on max size. So that way, if it loops around, we'll find the remainder and carry over. So we'll have I plus one and then remainder max size. Okay, so that will print out our value. So now we could create our main function and test it out. So let's go ahead and make our queue, call it my queue. And I can say my queue dot in queue will add a one. And then I could do my queue dot in queue, maybe add a two. And then my queue dot print. So this should print out our queue here. And we see one, two. So that is all good. So I think the one last function we want to add is removing items. And usually what that's called is the DQ. And that's not being disqualified in a sport, even though it sounds like it. So we're going to say if it's empty, like before, to do a quick check, we're going to return some uh, arbitrary garbage large value, large negative value to show that it's not working. And then otherwise, if it is working, we want to remove it. So we're going to return or not. Yeah, we're going to remove it by changing the index. So we're going to move the my first index over. So it's as if that item there just disappeared. So we're going to do MQ and first plus plus. So if you recall my prefix postfix, um, you know that this will first use it and then assign, increment the value. So that's the postfix. Okay, so that should help us remove the item. And we could do a quick test here. We could say my Q dot DQ, and let's just remove the one. And then if I print it out, actually DQ, you don't need to pass in because it'll just take the first value out. Okay. So now if I run this again, I see one, two, two. So the new list is only two. So that's working. Okay. So that's how you implement a queue data structure. And if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.